Hello! Welcome to Inky Art School. This video was a live class I held on Facebook as part of my free 10-day Inky Art School course. You can watch all 10 videos and get the free downloads I mention at www.johannabasford.com forward slash Inky Art School. I'll pop a link below. And if you like this class, be sure to check out my book, How to Draw Inky Wonderlands. It's jam-packed with easy-to-follow, step-by-step tutorials, creative project ideas, and of course, it wouldn't be an inky adventure without some pages to colour. Thanks for watching, and have fun. Hello! That caught me by surprise. I was like, I have a few different monitors here. I'm like some kind of crazy investment banker. But hello, welcome to Inky Art School Day 8. Can you believe it? Now, those of you that were on Facebook earlier might have seen me pop up on my Johanna Basford page, not the Inky Art School page, with a tutorial for over on there. And I realise that this might confuse you when you're like scrolling through your phones or whatever light arts we have changed my top to make it easier for you. I know, how convenient that I had this in the studio. So if you're watching this and thinking, she isn't doing these live, she was wearing a pink top earlier. You are correct, you eagle-eyed creative. I just got changed, quick wardrobe change for you. So this is a completely different video, separate tutorial, just for you guys at Inky Art School. Thank you for watching. Today we are going to be drawing birds. I know, how beautiful. Little songbirds, little tweet birds, they could be lovebirds on a wedding invitation, they could be robins for Christmas. Birds are just like a really sweet little thing to draw but for years I find them really difficult because mine never really looked like they could fly and then I was like that, it doesn't matter they're a drawing. It doesn't matter if anatomically that thing could never take off because it looks really cute. And once I got over that mindset, birds were, yeah, pretty, pretty easy. So before we start digging into that, I'm going to speak about inspiration because a couple of folk have asked me, what do I do if I completely lack inspiration? I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start drawing. That is the thing that stops me from drawing. Hello everyone. Oh, I can see your comments today. That just proves how pernickety this platform is because now I can see them. I'm not sure if I'm loving this neckline. We'll just go with it. This was a little TK Maxx find. I really like the print. I just, I just don't know about this, but anyway, let's not speak about fashion because I am not the girl to speak to about clothes. Let's speak about inspiration. So, we all get to the point where we think we have run out of ideas. A creative block is a well-known problem. Everybody that I know is, who is creative suffers from it. Famous artists suffer from it. Authors, photographers, sculptures, sculptures, sculptors. It's just a thing. It happens. Um, so don't feel that you're alone. If anything, it's quite a good thing. Like it's a problem that, that professionals have. So why shouldn't you have it? Here's a few tricks and tips to sort of get around that. By the way, I just cleaned my work surface and I squished it, sprayed it with some of this. This is the Method um, multi-surface cleaner that I did with those guys a few years ago. Let me see if I can quickly show you. And the smell is so nice. Look, it's this. Oh, it's, look, I designed this. And I, um, I developed the scent with them as well. It was such a lovely experience, but the point of showing you this was, I don't even think you can get this anymore. I always use the same scent when I'm cleaning my desk, so I always either use this stuff and, oh, you shouldn't probably put a spray so close to your face, but I just love the smell. It's all natural, but at home, I sometimes make up like a bottle with diluted essential oils in it, something like lavender. Uh, is it sandalwood? There's a few, I, like, I really like geranium, which is a weird thing to like. It's kind of like tomato-y. I think if you can associate a smell with an activity, it just sort of locks in that feeling for you. So when I smell this smell, I don't automatically think of cleaning my kitchen, which I would do if I used it for cleaning my kitchen. I think of doing really nice drawings because I always clean my desk before I do a really special drawing because I obviously don't want it to get dirty. So it's just quite a nice way to sort of set the scene, I guess, the same way that you sort of link a perfume to a person or, you know, all those good things. I like the smell of freshly baked toast, toasted toast 
to my granny because she ate a lot of toast. There you go. As ever, I have completely lost my train of thought. What were we speaking about? Inspiration. So here's a few quick tricks and tips that I use when I'm feeling uninspired. First off, I try to change my mindset and the way for me to change my mindset is to change my physical state. So if I have been sitting at a desk, staring at a sheet of paper, feeling like the world is going to end, I'm never going to have another idea again, I go for a walk, I do some jumping jacks, I do some skipping, preferably outdoors is best, get a bit of fresh air, a bit of sunlight, but moving your body and getting your blood pumping, I have no idea why this works, but it seems to whatever is blocking you, whether it's energy, blood flow, I don't know, chi, it just pushes everything out and it just gives you that opportunity to have a refresh, to flush out all the negativity and to make room for all those great new ideas. Being outside for me is always, always a winner. Second up would be to make it playful. So sometimes having a little challenge or something that you know that you have to do is the best way to just dive in. So for example, it could be that you get some post-it notes not these ones, these are a bit small. You know, oh, here's some good ideas. These ones. Draw on a post-it. Set yourself the challenge that you are going to draw one flower on a post-it every day for 20 days. Stick those post-its on the wall like this. Brilliant. Um, and then eventually you will have a wall of post-its with the evidence of your drawing. And you don't need to come in every day and think, what am I going to draw? You know what you're going to draw. You're going to draw a flower on a post-it. Just do it. And I think having that first initial step stops you having like that, the fear. What else have I got? Prompts. How to draw in Key Wonderlands is full of creative prompts and not the kind of vague ones. Like there's some amazing creativity books out there. Like Breakfast Journal is a fantastic example. Uh, so Breakfast Journal gives you creative prompts, but they're very, very open. And if you are that kind of person or you're ready for that kind of creative challenge, that is perfect. But if you like something a bit more specific, like, ah, it's just too wide. I don't know where to begin. It's like kind of so vague. It's it's too open for me. Mine are a bit more specific. So it'll be things like add leaves to this floral bouquet. Draw a door in the middle of this forest, you know, if we've just done the secret door tutorial. It's very um, specific, but within that, you can go off and be very, very creative if you wanted to. But if you prefer like a little bit of a safety buffer, this is more for you, I would say. So get yourself through this book and then the more vague and open creative prompt books would be ideal. That would be my top tip. Uh, last up, draw an alphabet I've written. Yep, obviously. So things like a challenge where you, um, Inktober is a great example. It's like a daily prompt and you have a set time limit. Uh, I think having an end point really helps. That's why I said with the post-its, do like 20 days. If you just said, I'm going to do a drawing a day, like what, for the rest of your life, for the next month, for a year, until you're 80? It's just a bit vague. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I work best under controlled situations. So if you were to say, draw an alphabet, every day you were going to draw a letter of the alphabet. That is a really lovely, manageable, creative challenge. They don't need to be big, but you've got a progression. You know that tomorrow you have to do B, the day after you have to do C. You can make them flowery, whatever you want, but it's just... I think sometimes the creative world is just too wide and expanse and that is overwhelming. I guess it must be like having creative agoraphobia. You know, when you have that condition when you go outside and you're just too overwhelming. I like a little bit more compartmentalized approach. Um, and I find that once I'm in there and safe and working, then I can broaden my horizons. I think that's covered everything I've written on my little post-it notes. I'm a big fan of the post-it note. Let's dive in to the tutorial. We are gonna draw birds. Good morning. Oh, do you know what? it's so nice getting your um being able to see your comments. I haven't been able to see them for the last few days. Thank you so much. Hi from the Isle of Butte. Fantastic. Okay, let's switch the camera and get started with today's drawing. So if you have your copy of How to Draw in Q Wonderlands, we are gonna be doing a tutorial pretty much based on this page here. So this is the birds page. 
they um, are five step-by-step -step tutorials for how to draw birds and then on this page there are some little inky branches and you can fill them with your birds and add, yeah, I mean and you could also add flowers add more blossoms <gasps> do you know what I forgot to do I forgot to show you the gallery images from yesterday I'll do that at the end I'm gonna put them up here so I don't forget uh, but yeah we're gonna we're gonna draw some birds so let's let's begin I might just put this out of the way over here I'm gonna draw on my Dollar Downey layout paper you guys can draw on any paper that you like I was doing some stuff this morning and it's gone through under that page which annoys me so I'll use that bit for something else I'm going to draw with my clicky pencil. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let's just draw a few birds to get us going. This isn't a really massive tutorial, guys. Um, we're just going to take it slow. A bit calm. The pace has been a bit crazy the last 10 days, hasn't it? So bird number one, we're going to draw a diagonal line like that. Let's see okay I might just zoom in a bit more and then a little semicircle just like this so at the moment our bird basically looks like an orange segment <laughs> but don't panic all become clear after you've got your orange segment add a little head so as you that would, if that was going to be a full circle, it would be like that, but we only really need that bit. But if you want to draw the full circle, draw that. And then I'm going to do a little mini orange segment in here. We get a candy, a chocolate in the UK called Terry's Chocolate Orange, and I cannot draw that shape without thinking about it. It is so delicious. Tail. We're going to extend this line out a little bit down to here and then one curved line in and all the way up like that and I kind of make it a little bit wider here than it is down here so it does taper towards the the end of the tail next up a little eye birds work better I find with little beady eyes little beak when in doubt keep the beak little a big beak is just a big beak I find it a bit distracting and then I'm going to add this little quiff on his head so just round it up over his head a little bit of a wave shape and swoop it back like that next up let's add some wee legs diagonal line like that straight line for the claw foot done done uh, um, and then do the other one like that. Mm, do you know, I might, I'm going to move his feet back a bit. I think I'm going to put them more here. The top one and here. That's basically where I had it the first time, but for some reason that pleases me more. I always have like the front part of the foot longer than the back part. I think of this is like the fingers and this is the toe. No, this is the thumb and this is the fingers. So it's shorter at the back. I know birds don't have fingers and toes. And that's him really. Now I would just tidy him up and add some extra bits. So I'm going to smooth out these lines a little bit. Work out his head's fine. I might, I might do a little line down like this. I might give him a little bit of decoration in here. Well, that's pretty much it. Now this is case in point. I think that bird has got a pretty slim chance of flying, and his wing does look suspiciously like a mussel shell. You know, like this seafood. I'm alright with that. We'll just call that bird number one. 
With that, folks, let's move on to bird number two. We'll draw two birds in pencil first, and then we'll ink them. Bird number two is going to be our little robin. He is a little bit different. So the beginning, I'm going to do him a good bit away just in case he goes a little bit skew off. Now, this is like a funny sort of teardrop shape. But not a teardrop. What would that be? Like a molecule drop. We'll go with that. Next up, draw a little scoop here. And then extend this line down for his wing. And we're going to cuddle this back in. Now, I, this, unlike quite a lot of my drawings, it doesn't really appear at the moment. It's not really obvious how this is going to work out to be a robin, but just bear with me. This is actually his face. This is his red breast. This is his wing. Next up is tail. Or her tail. Is her tail? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to extend this line back a little bit and just sort of add in a triangle there. That's all I'm going to do for the tail. A couple of little, almost like speech marks, commas, like that. Teeny little eye, beak. Do you see him now, folks? It's all coming together. Eight legs, one down here, one down here. Who knows what he's looking at up here. Maybe some holly or something. But that is essentially a right wee robin. We'll do one more. I'm just trying to see if my clock's disappeared now. Honestly, computers. I tried to do a Facebook watch party yesterday, which was a complete disaster. Learning a new thing every day. Right, I'm going to ink these. You can either ink straight on top of the pencil drawing or you can do what I'm about to do. Pop it underneath and redraw an ink. I'm going to use my 0 0.2 fine liner. The tutorial I did this morning on the other Facebook page, I used a 0 0.5 and I have to admit it was causing me a little bit of anxiety. My toes were curling up. It was quite, <laughs> it was quite large to be drawing with. This is my comfort zone, back in my, my wee finicky details. So, uh, let's tackle this little guy first. I was also going to say about inspiration, there is a tremendous TED Talk by the author Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Ape Pray Love. You might have seen the movie. Julia, I was about to say Julia Aniston, it's not Julia Aniston, who was it? Julia Roberts. I would say read the book, don't watch the movie, I did both, I definitely, definitely like the book much better than the movie. Anyway, Elizabeth Gilbert, Liz, as apparently our friends like to call her, and how I'm going to call her just now, uh, did this amazing TED talk about inspiration and about how some cultures believe that ideas are sent to us by you know some other force whether you think that's god mother nature the universe some other divine creature whatever well not whatever that's really dismissive of like spirituality but whoever or whatever it is they send us ideas we don't make them so it's not a case of having a great idea it's waiting for one to be delivered and I thought this was really interesting, and she does a whole TED talk about it, super interesting. And then I've got a book that she'd written called Big Magic, where they were, it went into much more detail. Really liked the book, um, but essentially it's the TED talk is a book. Um, and it's fab. I'll put a link to the TED talk in the, after this live class. Please, please, please go and watch it. The minute I stopped putting pressure on myself to have great ideas and thought it's not up to me to have a great idea, I just have to wait for a great idea to come to me and be open to it and then I'll I'll run with it. 
after I did that, I had so many good ideas. It just took the pressure off. It was crazy how effective it was. Right, that's that one done. Now, this little guy. I'm going to do this bit first. Give him a little bit of a, a fluffy tummy. My tail. And then for his fluffy little tummy, I'm just going to do a few little lines like that, which I think makes them look pretty, pretty fluffy. We could do a little bit of a marking on here for them. And if we do some lines like this, it'll look like wing feathers. I'm also going to do little dots all around his head. That's him. Okay, let me just take this pencil sketch out from underneath. There is our two little inky birds. Now, if you wanted to add some extra details, you could add some a feather floating down from one of them. I'm going to do it on here first. So, to draw a feather, I just use the same technique as I use for drawing a leaf. So, I draw a little line. And then a bit of a V like that, and then join it up. And what looks nice is if you have like a few little wispy bits like this. You can also have like a break in the feather. This will become more clear when I ink it. Just like so, a couple of little feathers. Right, let's draw, let's draw a bird in some foliage. Because I'm all about practical uses. And although two little birds is lovely, you might not know what to do with it. Somebody's just said, Kirsten's just said, after 20 days, what do you do with the notes? To collect them in a drawing or what? <laughs> it's like, you can do whatever you want. I think, uh, I think the point there is the journey as opposed to the destination. So you could just stick them all on a page in your sketchbook. You could leave them on the wall. It's not really about making a finished thing. It's about having a daily art practice. In fact, this is maybe something that we'll develop for next year, but it's about having a daily art practice, something that you know that you can do straight off the bat to sort of be your creative warm up. It's not about creating a 20 tile collaged image. I hope that makes sense, Kirsten. Basically, don't, don't panic about making a, a thing every time. So I didn't tell you that you would need your compass today so feel free to be annoyed. I think we'll do a bird in a circle of foliage. Top tip, draw the bird first, get rid of the compass. So I find it really difficult sometimes to get things to all line up. So I'm going to draw my wee bird first. Let's do this one going this way. So diagonal line. A orange segment like this. You guys know what I mean by orange segment, huh? Like, that looks like a piece of orange. Like, if that was like this. 
or like a lemon and lime wedge. But we're not drawing that, we're just, <laughs> we're drawing a bird. Now let's draw his head. And I'm going to draw a wing. It's going to come down to almost this edge here. And then extend this line further down. And this will be the tail. And this time it's wider, it's broader at the bottom than it is at the top. That looks a bit like a knife, you know, like a knife that you would get in a picnic set. Just like so. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of detail to his wing and give him oh, an eye and a beak. What's that? Crooked kind of beak. And like a punky mohawk hairstyle. I know birds don't have hair. I'm not really sure what that is. He's, uh, he's looking down a bit. Let's make him look up. Seems a bit more cheerful to look up slightly. So to make him look up, just move the beak further up and the eye like that. So before he was kind of looking that way. I think where the beak is pointing is where you sort of feel the bird is looking. I'm going to make him a bit chubbier as well. Fatten him up a little bit. And then our little feet. So these ones, maybe his feet here and here. Right, that's our wee basic bird. Just gonna raise those lines so we can see them properly. All right, grab your compass, pop the spiky bit pretty much in the middle of your bird, and then draw a wee circle. My one's tail's poking out. I quite like that. You might not, but I always think that that looks a bit more natural. Now I'm going to draw a bit of a twig coming through here that you can be perched on. So this is why I draw the bird first. If you drew the circle first and then drew the twig in, you might find it difficult to line it all up so that he fits on the twig or his feet or blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean. It's just easier to place the bird first and then work around the rest. And now I'm just going to draw some leaves really quickly around here. You don't need a leaf on every bit of the circle. Somebody asked how to draw three pointed leaves. I know which ones you mean. So let's draw, let's draw these round here first. And then I'll show you. So this is the ones I think you mean. I draw a shape like that. Oh, let me zoom in. Sorry, folks. A shape like this. And then I draw a little bit on the side and another little bit on the side. Let me show you again. Like a flame shape. A little bit on that side. A little bit on that side. Now I'm just going to keep drawing leaves all the way around here. Don't want if they don't exactly fit on the exactly adhere is what I'm trying to say to the circle. It's just roughly at some point these two ends are going to meet. It looks like it's going to be here. I just get the leaves to be a little bit smaller there. I think that looks alright. Don't particularly worry about that. Do a few kind of going rogue 
coming out with the, the wee bit. And it also, a couple in here. Lastly, I'm going to draw some, I'm going to just quickly put in some stars here. So here's how I draw a star. As you can see, that is not a perfect five point star. What I do, I'll try to get my hand out of the way. I just go up, one sort of like diagonally that way, a point diagonally that way, a point diagonally that way, and one that way. And I don't really worry if they're wonky. I actually think the wonkier they are, the better. I'm going to do some sparkles. Okay, that was a super quick run through of that. Now I'm going to ink it. I said this was going to be a really calm tutorial, but I just I can't. I just get so caught up. What time are we even at? Oh, I'm okay for time. Right, I'm going to pop this under here and ink it. Obviously you can just ink over the top, wait for the ink to dry and then erase my friends. Let's add some inky details. So I find if you're, when you're inking, so this is zoomed in as we can get. Instead of making all your lines super smooth, if you sometimes do a little bit like this, like a little zigzaggy thing, it just makes them look a bit fluffy. So like that line is super smooth, is his little head. His chest, all zigzaggy, just makes him look fluffy. And then we'll draw his little fluffy wing and his tail. So another top tip I have, if you sort of get that blank feeling when you sit down at your drawing desk, you're like, oh my goodness, I have no idea where to begin. And I read about an author that did this, and it was like someone super famous. I want to say like, like Hemingway, like it, it literally is somebody that famous. And I got really into morning routines for a while, and I bought this book called, I think it was maybe called Morning Rituals. And this famous author whose name I should remember at the end of every day finished his working day halfway through a sentence so if it was like the dog and then he would stop and I was like that what how can that be fulfilling and then he would leave it on his desk and the next morning when he came in he had to finish that sentence as the first thing that he had to do so it was sort of the same thing. It was like an easy way to just get straight into it without having to be like, oh, I just, I don't know where I am. I don't know how to start this next section. What will the idea be? No, he sort of left himself an open-ended bit so he could dive straight in. Smart, huh? I sometimes do that. I leave myself a specific bit to ink. Oh, my feed keeps disappearing. Are you guys still there? <gasps> what has happened? Sorry, folks. Hold on. Right. I see some people are joining. Really sorry, people. These things happen. I'm actually going to give him... Mm, yeah, he's fine. Looks a bit stern, doesn't he? Give him a bit of detail in here. Uh, let's draw these leaves. Can you see that okay? The last comment that I saw before that froze was uh, the lady who must have asked of me for the three point leaves going, yes, those are the ones that I meant. <laughs> so that was a positive note. I'm really glad we answered your leafy question. I'm sorry I didn't quite catch your name before my screen died. So when you're inking those three pointers, I don't ink all the lines in between. I just ink 
the outer lines like that. And that's how you get a perfect little, well not perfect, but a sweet little three point leaf. And then we'll just ink round these outlines. And I do these in sections. So for example, this leaf is going to overlap those ones. So I draw that leaf first. Then we'll do these sort of longer skinny leaves. And then we'll this bit here. And then I'm actually too scared to look up now in case it's just all gone here while on there. I kind of feel that there's some things that I can fix and there's some things I can and if Facebook's gonna do that, I just I can't fix it for you guys. Oh well, no, we're okay. I've got, but I've lost your comments again. Oh my word. Mark Zuckerberg, what is going on? Fix the groups. Why can't we do a live video and see comments and not have it time out? I shouldn't complain just in case we get kicked off the platform or something terrible. There we go. Right. I'm just going to add a few little inky details to these leaves. These three point hours, I'm just going to do this super smooth. I got one. Right. Well done to everybody that has been drawing their candy skulls for Halloween. Love seeing them. So a few of them have been coloured in already. Absolute crackers. Well done. It's nice, isn't it? Drawing your own pictures for colouring. Because then you can make it exactly as you want. Or you could do a series of them and have each one slightly different. That would make a really nice collage you pick. And if you've got a few kids, you can do each one a slightly different colouring page. So if one of them really likes roses, they could have roses as the hair garland, or sorry, as the flower that's on the, on the page. I'm just going to draw this little. So look, when we get to this bit, don't draw over the top of his little feet, sort of draw up to it, in between it and out the other side. And that makes it look like he is perched on this there twig. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to actually do some extra little moves in here as well. Put these ones on here. So I'll put a comment on both of the videos today just saying there's going to be part one and part two to Inky Art School today. So watch the first video up until the point where it jams and then watch the other video, this one, after that. I don't really know why the stars are out. Is this a night picture? Maybe it's a nightingale. Do nightingales only come out at night? Who knows? And I'm going to do some little sparkly things. So remember for the sparkle, it's just four little lines up, down, left, right, nothing in the middle. Remember to do some under here. Quite going to go with that. He looks okay, doesn't he? That is our little, our little bird. Take that out. So you could do something like that and have it as a cute little greeting card. You could vary the foliage around it and do some holly. So for drawing holly, a little bonus tutorial for you. Do three little circles. That's what I do for, a, excuse me, a sprig of holly all together like that. 
straight line coming out. And one, two, three is the point. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You could do that all the way around, and that would be a really cute if that was a, a robin. One, two, a really cute little Christmas card. I've actually got how to draw holly tutorials somewhere on YouTube already. Go take a look at that. But you could just do that all the way around instead of leaves. And that would be a lovely little Christmas card. Now, oh. Dear me, deary me, I'm back. Uh, I hope that was helpful. What a day, what a day for technology. I'm going to show you the gallery images from yesterday because they are far. Let me flip, flip this back. Uh, so that was today's. Look at these. So this one is by Sarah. Let me zoom out so you can see Sarah's. She has done this in, I think she said, in her journal. Love him. For the, for some reason, this I think this one looks quite like a little man. I think it's these twirly bits. You have to really watch twirly bits. It's a little bit moustachey. Love it. Well done, Sarah. This one here is by Jill Cracker. Like, you would colour that in and be really happy if you had that on Halloween. Well done, Jill. And lastly, we have our overachiever of the day, Marilyn. Now, Marilyn, it is testament to how much I love this that I chose to print it out because us Aberdonians are known for being a bit stingy, a bit tight with our money. And this took a lot of ink to print out, but look how beautiful it is. You've done such a great job drawn it all and coloured it and I love these little um, marigold petals that you've got going around the outside. How beautiful is that? Well done Marilyn. It was well worth all the ink. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna po post, pop, pop a link to the Elizabeth Gilbert TED talk that I was talking about earlier in the comment for this video. Uh, hopefully you can find part one and part two. I have no way of editing these two things together, folks, so I appreciate, I do appreciate it's a bit annoying, but I'm sorry there's nothing that I can do about it today. Hopefully we'll be back to normal tomorrow, talking of tomorrow. I'm going to be a bit later tomorrow. I have a couple of appointments in Aberdeen that I just couldn't reshuffle. Um, so I know that you'll understand that I would have reshuffled them if I absolutely could and I tried and I just couldn't do it. So I think by the time I get back to the studio, it's going to be about 4.30. I can't confirm because I just don't know how the traffic's going to be. So what I'm going to do is come straight back here, hop on and do the live. It will not be at 3 o'clock, that is for sure. I think around about 4.30. Uh, so what I would say is just wait and get it on catch up. It'll definitely be on here by 6 p.m. tomorrow night because that's the time that I'm back at home. So don't try and plan your day around me being on here live. Just know that the video will be here by 6 o'clock at the latest. Tomorrow we are drawing oh, leafy bugs. You heard me right, folks. Leafy bugs. These guys. I'll show you step by step how to draw something like this. And I love these. I know bugs aren't everyone's cup of tea, but I just think they're so pretty. The thing that originally inspired these were like the little scarab beetles that took in Camus and all those amazing ancient Egypt priests and princes had on their things, on their things, on their tombs. I just, I think they're so pretty. So you will need drawing paper, drawing pencil, tracing paper, eraser, drawing pens like pigment liners and like your regular pencil for tracing because this is a symmetrical one. The good news is the basic principle can be used on like leafy bugs, butterflies, dragonflies, crabs, anything symmetrical. You don't even have to do a symmetrical one. So the fox and the rabbit 
in Enchanted Forest are done the same way that we are going to do our leafy bugs tomorrow. It just They're not symmetrical, that's the only difference. But it's just a really sweet little tutorial and if you're looking for something to make as a present, oh I just think a little dragonfly done like that, like and painted up, especially with those pearlescent watercolour paints. What are they called? Oh, what are they called? I'll think for tomorrow. I think they begin with a C. Anyway, they look beautiful. Um, and just really jewel-like. Okay, I have waffled enough today. Thank you so much for everyone that's watched and bared with me, bore with me during the technical difficulties. I hope there's a few tricks and tips for inspiration finding in there for you and that you're happy now to draw birds. Thank you for watching. I'll see you here tomorrow about 4.30 UK time, but definitely by 6pm for the live catch up. Back to normal on Friday. Nobody's about that. Thank you for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!